Welcome back to another video in our Typo3 Editor tutorial series. In this tutorial, we will take a closer look at the history undo function. When working in the backend, if you make a mistake in changing or deleting something, or simply wish to revert a change, the history undo function is the function for you. For the purposes of this video, I'm simply going to refer to the history undo function as the function for the most part, so please keep that in mind when watching this video. The history undo function can be quite intimidating at first. However, once you've watched this video, you should feel comfortable to use it. First of all, there are two different functions you can access. First, there is the element only function. The button for this is found by right clicking on an element's ID icon in the top left of the element. The element only function will show you the history of that specific element. This makes it a useful tool if you know exactly which element you wish to undo a change in. If you have deleted the element and wish to bring it back, the next option is better suited. Secondly, there is the page function that is found by right clicking on the desired page in the page tree. The page function will show you the entire history of that page, including any deleted elements. For both of these options, there is a settings menu at the top in which you can select how many changes you wish to view. So, if you can't see the changes you wish to undo, try expanding the list from the default of 10 entries to something larger, like 20 or all entries. Once you click on the history undo button, you will be greeted by the change log. You won't have the same history as me, as the information displayed will be relevant to the site that you're on. Here we are in the page change log. In this view, we can see the history of the changes that you have made, whether that be changes to a specific element or every change on a given page. Let's talk about the change log. Starting from the right, you have information about the content that was changed. Green text is content that was edited, while red text is content that was removed. To the left of that, you have the title of the element that was changed, along with the element ID. To the left of that, you can find who made the change, how long ago, and exactly at what time the change was made. And finally, on the far left, you have the Roll Back Preview button. This is the button you want to click if you want to undo a change. Please note that clicking this button will not have any effect. This button merely takes you to a preview. Once you have clicked on the Rollback Preview button, additional information is shown in the form of the preview for Rollback. If you were to click on any of the Rollback buttons, such as this one or this one, you will undo whatever change you have selected. Now let's talk about the two different Rollback buttons. The Rollback All Changes Shown button will, as the name implies, roll back all changes listed here. While the roll back single record button will do just that and only undo a single change. If there is only one change to roll back, as there is in this case, both buttons have the same effect. Once you have clicked on one of the two options, you will have undone the change. Now to check you have correctly undone a change, go to the page or element in which a change happened and verify that it was the correct change. Moving on, in the case that changes to a page or element first have to be approved, or if you're simply experimenting with an idea, it is often time and effort saving if you first create a copy of the page you plan to edit. Otherwise, if the changes are not to your liking, you may find yourself having to go through the tedious process of finding all the changes you have made and undoing them to restore the page to its original content. When working on a copy, you always have the original page to fall back on, and if you wish to discard the changes, you could simply delete the copy with the now undesired changes. If the copy of the page is approved, you can then copy over elements that you changed and delete the old ones, or replace the original page with the new one. If you're doing the latter, remember to change the URL segment to reflect that of the original page, so that any potential links keep functioning as intended. Learn how to do that with a link to the video in the description below. Also keep in mind that if your site is live, you may want to work with the page or elements disabled, so that a visitor to the site doesn't see any work that is incomplete or unapproved. Moving on, the history undo function cannot be used to retrieve deleted files. 
Instead, you will have to use the Recycler folder in the file list. Let me explain this now. When a file is deleted in the file list, it disappears and cannot be recovered. There is a way, however, to add a safety net. That is done by creating a new folder in the file list named underscore recycler underscore. If this folder exists, every file which resides on the same or a lower level will be moved to this folder when it is deleted. From here, you can easily retrieve the file if you want to use it. Let me quickly show you how it's done. There is also a recycler page type, but this is merely a visual indicator and has no cleanup function. It serves a similar function as the folder type. You could use this page type as a spot to store pages that are meant to be removed. That brings us to the end of this tutorial. Please consider subscribing to stay up to date with our tutorials.